S&P refuses to break and rotation begins. NASDAQ takes out a lower low with big tech earnings on the horizon. Energy sector leads today. We'll explain why. Value growth rotation continues. Biotech continues to roll over. What's pushing regional banks higher? And what stocks to watch tomorrow for earnings? We have a lot to go over. Let's get to it. Hey, everybody. Welcome back. Just the, really the basics right here. We're still under that 4,600, unable to break it. What I like about today's action is we had every reason to go down with the amount of earnings that are going to be coming out tomorrow. We've had a little bad economic data, nothing really worth talking about, but something that could have just spooked the market. So you just kind of see and you see here and you have that gravestone. The market just did not care. Now we have this area here, which we have held three times. If we drill into it, as we're doing here on this 15 minute chart, we just take the top of this level here. Let's actually use the use the wick as a rejection because then we have the battle here that we can all see. And so I always want to see that. I always want to look for those wicks and see what's going on there. In other words, did we reject? And then we fought in the area that you rejected. So that becomes a little more solidified as a space. And then you can kind of see where you're at right here, here, and then rejection, rejection, rejection. So what does this mean? It means resistance flipped to support. We had every reason to go down today and we did not. Now we also did not break out. And what does that mean? It just means that you're bouncing around and chopping up and they're crushing options. Market makers are just having a field day with, with options. Just be, be really careful here until you get through this. Even some ideas that I had today that you know, looked great. I did well off the open with them and then they just went flat on the day and they're just out there collecting premiums today. So you have to be really careful and very careful the environment you're in. Tomorrow is going to be very similar unless it's an earnings play. But if you look at where we are for the past three days, we, we're, we're no man's land. We haven't really gone anywhere. If you, if you really look at it, all we've really done is just bounce around between this 4590 level up here and just see that and then you can see where you're also holding now this 4560 and that's all we're doing over and over again i think it's definitely something that we should be aware of and i don't think we need to do much about it except watch it for now i think the plays to work on are those that have earnings i think that we can get a lot of information from those that have earnings and we'll go over what to watch tomorrow morning and also tomorrow night because you have the fed meeting on wednesday so you have to realize you're going to have light volume what does light volume mean there's no better example of it than the nasdaq today we take a look at this nasdaq for this period of time you don't even have a range like you just had there you have this little you know battle going on here with itself and it's one range you're not really going anywhere you're not really doing anything and we'll drill into this in, on the daily in a moment here but we're really not you know we're not even really challenging the upper end of this band we're just sitting on the lower end of the band that in itself is a signal candidly when you're on the lower end of a trading range and you ride the lower end of the trading range you usually break and i say usually because you're going in the earnings season and you just don't know what's going to happen you have this dtl from here which is more of a couple day DTL. Not really a major you know, major line you would watch and you start incorporating this, you start getting into weeks and you can start seeing that you're kind of in the same, you know, what I'll refer to as a kill zone. You just come out a little further and you just drill out and then you just go out on an hourly two and look at it and go, okay, well, we're gonna hit here and how'd that go? Well, we flipped it and then we never came back from it. Right? This level right here, we never really came back from it. How to get super technical, you, you broke it, you reversed, you touched it, you reversed. So you start seeing that kind of stuff, it might make you feel a little bit better, but you're not going anywhere. And if we're not gonna go anywhere, it's not something that I really wanna be involved in. Now, as far as, I had some shorts on today and I'll get into them, but I also, I also had some longs on and I'm not really doing much on the short term side until this settles itself down because you're just going to get chopped up but i will go through a couple of them here if you just see this until you break above this 700 15 7 there's very little to do if you look at this on an hourly basis and just draw that straight across you can see the same battleground now here's four hours you can see the break the retest it tries to break so this is a huge bear flag and then we break the bear flag and then we don't go anywhere we reverse and now we're just sitting along the neckline of that flag. Well, so this is a huge bear flag failure. It doesn't mean you're out of the woods. You could just ride down here and drop. I personally think it's gonna be earnings driven more than it's gonna be Fed driven. The only thing the Fed can do is not raise rates. There's a 98% chance they're going to raise rates. So we all know what they're going to do. If we all know what they're going to do, then there's no edge. The only edge is the other side of the trade. And the other side of the trade is they don't raise rates for some reason. And I think he's still gonna say data dependent. So I don't think that's gonna be a big uh, wake up call. So the, again, so the only thing that I see that you could possibly do is come out there 
and not raised. Now, I have a little lime right here that I put for an alert. I'm just gonna take it off for now. We went over it this in the pre-market live. If you don't watch the pre-market lives, I'd suggest that you do. We go over a lot in those pre-market lives in a very short period of time to help people get prepped for the day. They're free and they're public. Click right here and you always wanna clone these. When you clone these, you get what? The same trajectory. And we like the same trajectory because that tells us roughly where we are and you can kind of see how you're hanging right there. So you have this upper channel and you're just bouncing around in there. You're not really breaking down, but you're also not rallying. So we saw this with NVIDIA today where we had Goldman, I'm staying in a four hour so you can kind of drill into the intraday action. But we had Goldman come out and reiterate its buy on it today. Well, before that would have got us 10, 15, 20 points. It got us three and two inside Joji. And I still have all these red bars. So it's not like it, it's not like it really did me any favors. If you drill into this, on an hourly, and all I'm doing is looking at price right now. I'm not look, doing anything else, I'm just looking at price. And if you look at the price right here, this is really all we have. And when you see that, we're not really going anywhere. So you'd like to see this hold and go from there. Now, you could throw in some indicators, you could throw in some volume and take a look here and just realize that you have zero volume. I'm adding no value by showing that. I'm just telling you, you have zero volume there. Where is value is just looking over here and just seeing how Friday it was just massive dumping. Massive, massive dumping ahead of this week. So that doesn't really bode well. Now, if we get rid of that and just reduce it, we look at this on an hourly, and I just have a very simple nine in here to kind of tell me what's going on in the world. You can see we're just battling that nine, and it's still pointing down. We had all day to try to get above it, and we were just unable to. The RSI is starting to turn down again after being oversold. So this is there's nothing here that's telling me that I have to rush into this. Again, this is gonna be earnings driven where we come in and we gap up, we gap down, and then of course, whatever the Fed does. So we understand what's going on with NVIDIA, and we've seen this play out. AMD is a great example. I came in short AMD with puts, and then we really didn't, I'm gonna clean this all off, and then we didn't really go anywhere, so I close it and lost a little bit, and then it starts to finally break, and then when it does, I short it, and I buy the puts back, and I did well with it, but the point being, how well did I really do? I mean, I had to be very sharp, scale out on the way down, and then just leave some, which is how I trade. I just leave some at break even so I don't keep trying to re-enter the same trade. It's just how I trade. Everybody trades differently. I'll scale out, and then if I think there might be more pain, I won't look to re-enter. I just leave that portion off, and, and whatever happens to it happens to it. I just can't lose money on the trade any longer. And I thought you might have follow-through, and that's why I left it on. If I think there won't be follow-through, I won't leave it on. It's, not too complicated, don't overthink it. Now you have this trend line right here and you can kind of see what's going on there. And that's really very attractive, isn't it? Breaks, retest that trend line, then breaks here. And you, you kind of see that there's nothing really redeeming about this AMD chart. I mean, there's nothing here that's telling you that you have to get involved. Now, if you go into the daily and you look at AMD, this is a 12, a 22, and a 55. I pointed this out earlier in the week and make sure that you watch Saturday's video. If you have not, it'll be linked at the end and it is all timestamped now. It's a long one, but there's a lot in there and I'd suggest that you watch it. So you can see the 12, the 22, and the 55 in here. That is what I use. You should use what you're comfortable with. But this was very telegraphed and we were talking about this for some time, this 1222 cross right here and that that signaled a problem. There's a pattern that I use. I'm sure there's a much cooler name for it. I just call it devil horns when you're up like this and it's a little double face. As somebody said in the comments, I need therapy, I am aware. So you see that face right here and you try to break out of it, comes back, tries to break out. You get this wonky little gravestone right there and then you slice through. This is telling you everything you need to know, guys. It's telling you everything you need to know. And then you're watching it break here and roll over. And then you're watching the RSI break here and I'll draw this in as well. Why am I showing this? Because they never came out and had great earnings. They had earnings and then they missed. I'm gonna just get rid of everything for a minute. This is AMD and I'm gonna get rid of all these lines. Never forget, this is where AMD came out and said, we we're gonna have mild guidance. And then they came out and said, we're just like NVIDIA and we're gonna say AI repeatedly. And then the stock exploded to the upside, but their guidance and earnings was here. And this was all NVIDIA and the AI boom. Now, push is coming to shove and we're gonna drop in these earnings. Let's do this on the daily, let's put this back. So we can see when this is coming out, August 1st. I would not wanna own this going into August 1st if I'm up here. I'm still about 30% off last quarter and last quarter was not great. And I think that's settling in that there's going to be winners and losers and this is not the one that I would play. Interestingly enough, 
you had Goldman come out and reiterate their buy here on Micron, and nobody cared. Just Wick City tries to move up. But that could just very well be the situation we're in now going into earnings, going into the Fed meeting, which is 99.8% are saying that it's going to rally. Now, there are certain names that move today on news. They're getting some really bad reviews on threads. We'll see. He got really bad reviews on a company called Facebook when it first came out, when it was mobile and the stock was 25 bucks. I say what you want, but when I start seeing this kind of stuff and everybody starts bashing it, it is very difficult in my experience in trading to look at a 45 degree angle and then just come out of nowhere and say, by the way, there's your high. That's very difficult. Just as difficult as the people that say, oh, I bought it here. It's just nonsense. So to call the high would be hard for me. What I would want to see for a sense that maybe, maybe we did catch the high would be something like this. We bounce up, retests, bounces up, fails, and then cracks. That to me would be something. This, we just don't go straight down. Straight down's not a pattern. I keep my eye on this. You are going into earnings. That is Wednesday. I would also think that if you had great earnings here, great earnings response here, after your negative earnings responses, maybe you're a little apprehensive because you had a good year. Maybe you're looking at the gap fill and you're saying, you know what? We're starting to break into that gap fill. I don't wanna be there for that. I wanna get out. And maybe that's what we're saying. I, I'm not entirely sure. We never really made it to the technical gap fill, which is the previous close. So I'm not really sure, but we did okay with the trade here, And but we are rolling. And make no, no bones about that. I mean, you broke right here. You have a negative divergence on the RSI. That is, that is clear as day. The issue is earnings could just change that up or down 20 bucks. And so that's the game you're playing now. My rule of thumb for those that are going to ask, will I stay in for earnings? Will I not stay in for earnings? Not just this name, but any name. If I'm not up 10%, that's my guideline. You, use, you should use whatever you want. My guideline's 10%. And that's what I would suggest. Netflix takes out the lower low, but then rallies. I have a short position in this. I'm still comfortable with it, but I do think I might come up here and retest that 22. That is a possibility. So I don't have to just watch the higher high tomorrow and then see how it acts and go from there. I do think people are concerned about Tesla and him taking his eye off the ball because now we're going to name Twitter X. Who am I to judge? Maybe it's the right move. Maybe it's not. seems like if you buy a company and it's got a brand, you might want to stick with the brand. But what do I know? Anyway, you see this undercut right here in the rally and you're trying to get over that and you're having a heck of a time. Pretty much telling you everything you need to know. Now, there was something here that I kept pointing out in the room, and I found this fascinating today. And I did come in short this. And I did well with the short off the open, but then it just, that was it. It just, boom, completely reversed. And now you can see this double bottom. Let's get rid of the drawing and let's clean this all up. And let's just go through this double bottom. And you can all see that W pattern. It's pretty glaring here. You can see the wick right here and then how you responded to that wick right here. I'm sure you all see that already. You probably don't really need me to point it out, but there it is. Please comment if me going through some of this is helpful. In other words, explaining these patterns in the middle of explaining what happened during the day and what to look for tomorrow. I try to throw in these little educational tidbits or easy or to easier to digest. Just let me know what your thoughts are there. This is what I called out in the room today because I found this fascinating. And I, you know, when you break and you have an earnings break, I won't put an I don't put an anchor VWEP everywhere because if you put an anchored VWEP everywhere, you're gonna have a line everywhere and you're gonna say, see, there it goes. It's a confirming bias. When I have an event, I'll put an anchored VWEP on it because that'll tell me where the players are for that event. You could see perfectly here at 1.30 when we got up to that level where all these players were in, they all said, the average person said, thank God, get me out and I'll regroup. That's exactly what happened here. Exactly what happened here. Okay, and just real quick, I'm actually going to do a video on this, but you can actually do this like two day VWAP trades where if you have news, go put the, the VWAP out there. And then you can go and find a spot, whether it's up or down. You could have done this with AEHR the other day as well. We did a trade in that on the room. People will remember that trade. Anyway, you see how you touch right here and then that's it. But here you go. Here's your undercut. You don't know you have a double bottom until what? You flip this, the previous high, which is right here. Now you have a confirmed. But what got me interested on the long side here was all these wicks. All of a sudden, it was just acting like that VWAP was just a hot potato. And before... They, you know, they wanted to get rid of it. They couldn't get, you couldn't pay to touch it. And then here, couldn't pay to go near it the other way. You start to see that you're seeing a what? A change in trend. That let us know that there was a trade there and there was a little trade there, took it. It is what it is. But where am I going with this and what do you need to watch? 
you need to watch this tomorrow and you need to watch this level. This is encapsulating, but it is still a bearish possible flag that looks like it might be a pendant or some kind of megaphone, but you have to give that time and see how it plays out. I do like the bullish engulfing for those that are in it. I do like the fact that it held where it needed to, but the bottom line here is we just don't know what we're dealing with yet. We just really don't. We don't know what the market's going to do. I have light volume, which is not surprising, but I am holding that 50 RSI, which I like. So we're going to have to go from there and see how that plays out. Now you are seeing certain stocks start to move ahead of earnings. Tomorrow, you have uh, P PacWest, which is probably one of the regional banks that has the most chance of having a problem based upon its current location, its portfolio. It was one of, it's one of the banks that came out and discontinued its dividend. And what we're seeing ahead of this is we're seeing buying. And we saw buying all day today. It started at you know, from the rip and it never looked back. If you drill into this, you'll be able to see this pretty clear. You can't really miss that. I mean, here's the open. And then you just form inside bar, inside bar, and then boom, it just breaks out. Very hard to very hard to not see what happened there. And I believe it's tomorrow morning that we have the earnings. I think it's tomorrow morning before we open that we're going to see this come out. The, these kinds of names, when we're going to see this kind of action, it's pretty important to me to watch this because it's going to move the whole sector. And they've been moving the whole sector. NYCB is another one. I have a position in this one. You're looking Thursday for earnings, but what this is doing, if you take a look at the others that have already come out, like Key, look how that's setting up. Look how beautiful that is. It pulls back, can't make that other bar down, starting to make a flag. You're starting to see money pour into these. We are seeing the regionals, people understand that the regionals are done and that they are no longer really have the probability of coming back down here. I mean, you should be able to see this with the left shoulder, the head, and then we could just point over here and say up and then down. We'll call that the right shoulder. And then of course, here's your neckline and you can see that right there. And now you're above it. So an inverted head and shoulders and you're running into it. You don't want to play an individual name. Some of the guys in the group, guys in the general sense, because there's a lot of girls in there as well. They're playing DPST, 3X bull fund. I don't mind playing that one. The problem with playing these is that you get to a point where you have to trade out of them if you're not going to stay in long time because the expense ratio will eat you up as people can attest to you kind of have to realize that you're going to trade for me i think you're buying some of these names at such a discount you might never really want to get out of them spotify is going to raise prices and they're selling the stock i bought the stock last earnings i'm still in there i'm up going to be up over 10 percent, so i'm going to probably stay in there for earnings which is tomorrow morning at the time of recording this i'm still in but I have after hours if I really want to try to pick at getting out of it. I, I'm not going to. I'm just going to ride it because I don't think that I'm going to drop. I'm just, I mean, if, I, if we do, you can timestamp this. If we drop 20 points, we drop 20 points. I don't think it's going to happen. I think that you're okay. And they wouldn't be raising prices if people weren't get buying their services. You know, good news, we're going to raise prices. Why? Because nobody's buying our product. It just doesn't make any sense. I actually think that they're kind of forecasting that things are pretty good. But again, you never know how this is going to play out, which is why I have a cushion and I'm willing to take that risk because I'm risking profit. I just don't see any scenario where it could get that worse. But again, you just don't know. But at least I have the cushion. I would watch Spot tomorrow. That's definitely on my radar. There are the names that I'm going to watch tomorrow night. After the close, you have Microsoft. You're going to want to watch Microsoft very, very closely. You have a negative divergence here. The dollar is not going to be in your favor. And the dollar was in your favor during these last quarters. And it starts dissipating and it's no longer in your favor. This was all AI and things are going to be great. And that's why we moved there. But the dollar, the weaker dollar during the conversion, it's not going to help us help them as much as when you had the stronger dollar and them explaining the conversion on the conference call. You'll remember the last three quarters, this had huge moves into the conference call. You can go and take a look at it. We're not going to have that because we're not going to have we're not going to have that because of the dollar. You may have it for another reason that I'm not aware of. Now, this morning we saw a lot of buying of Google pre-market and then they just went away. And I don't know where they went, but they went away. Snap is usually a dumpster fire. If I had to bet which stock's going to be a dumpster fire tomorrow, I would think that it's going to be Snap and you can just kind of see this. I'm not really going out on the limb here. This is tomorrow night and you can just see dumpster fire, dumpster fire, dumpster fire dumpster fire. Guess what's coming? I mean, it's not really, it's not rocket science, guys. I mean, they have problems. I don't know anyone that says, hey, I'll talk to you on Snapchat or whatever the heck the kids are saying. Pack West, which I mentioned, it looks like they're after hours. It looks like they are not tomorrow morning at the time recording. This looks like they're after hours. Now, 
T Doc tomorrow night. You're going to want to watch that one. I don't know how that's going to do. You never know how that's going to do, but just be aware of it. And then you have the legacy names like Texas Instruments. They can be up or down, but they're legacy. And Taiwan Semi says legacy is having a problem realm. Maybe they're right. You are watching biotech continue to get weaker and weaker as they talk about tighter lending standards. And that does affect biotech. I just want to point out the very simple fact that even though we're talking about biotech rolling, if you are to look at this chart, where has biotech gone in the past 12 months? Really nowhere. We really have not gone anywhere. If we take a look at this, if we go out 18 months and we say from 22 and we just do st go straight across and we just look at biotech. Let's just do it from this point in January. Where's biotech been in the past 18 months? As we're saying it's rolling, is it? Or is it just coming back to this, this median where it's been? I don't really view it as rolling. There are some concerns I have and I, I'm gonna walk through those. Uh, number one, I just wanna go through this, the value names. They are continuing to push. We went over this Saturday. Watch Saturday's video. There's a lot of really good stuff in there. But, and if you like when I follow up like this on Saturday's video with what I do tonight, just comment below and I'll start doing more of the follow up. The Saturday video to me is like the big video and then we fill it in during the week with how things actually transpire. If you haven't picked that up, all these videos are actually connected. You can see what you're doing here, value growth, and you can see how that's continuing. But, well, what are they doing? What are they buying? Well. Procter & Gamble. Procter & Gamble had a good day. Yes, but where are they really putting their money? Because they're not really rushing in the Procter & Gamble, are they? No, they're actually rushing into energy. Goldman's coming out and saying $96 a barrel now. Well, we're not at $96 a barrel now. We're not, we're at 78. Goldman's saying 96 in a year, year and a half. So now all of a sudden you have Exxon this week, you have Chevron this week, and so all of a sudden you're seeing people getting a little giddy for oil again. I'm still watching these trusts. I like these trusts a lot. This is the one I like the most. We'll see how it goes, BPT. I, I don't have a position yet. I really like this TPL chart. It's really shaping up. It's just expensive and a lot of people really can't get involved with it due to the price. But if I had to pick one of these trusts that looks the best, to me, this one is completely overdone. And it's giving, giving, I'm not gonna get into all the signals, but you have a positive divergence on the RSI here. You're flipping the higher high. You have the double bottom. This one's set up to, to rock and roll, quite frankly. It's just very expensive. So actually, I've even not put it in our, uh, in, our, in our newsletter yet, but I like this one a lot. So that's what I would be focused on. What is concerning me? I know people are gonna look and say, well, that shouldn't concern you. I'll tell you why I'm gonna go through this, because you're seeing these names bid up, like these little junky names, like. PSQH and they're bidding them up and then they're just sweeping the legs. AI, they couldn't have bid this thing up more to set people up greater today. And then they just swept the legs again and dropped you. All they're doing off the open, and I'm just gonna say this, be really careful tomorrow until you have the Fed meeting because all they're doing is tripping these orbs that all the guys are using now. Everybody trades a five minute orb now. And if everybody's trading it, guys, you're gonna need something else, just FYI, because the, all, all they do is just build an algorithm around it. You see these levels and how you're cracking, it's an issue. That's gonna be a problem for people. Be aware of that and you're seeing that you're seeing them do that and they're not doing it just once they're doing it in several names and they're doing it all over so when you see these kinds of you know sell-offs and then all of a sudden you rally back and you can't really get anywhere let's clean this off and i'll show you what i mean here and then all of a sudden you really can't get anywhere rallies tries rallies gets to the high it looks like it's going to break what do they do take out the high of the day if we take out the high of the day we'll get people in and that's exactly what they did. And you're watching these kinds of shenanigans over and over again. Just be aware of that, all right? You're just gonna see a lot of that again tomorrow, except for the names that came up with earnings in the morning and kind of go from there. That's where my head is and that's what I would be focused on. That's it.